As I said in my previous video, I wanted to reflect on how my new drive system and the wireless control was working in the open day. And this is what I want to talk about in this video. First of all, um, I'm just going to talk about this open day again. Uh, I did mention it in previous videos uh, because this is, I think, about the third, sorry, fourth times I've been here. Secondly, well, I want to talk about the throttle. And then lastly, towards the end of the video, I just want to mention something like because I had some me me mechanical issues and it turns out it was absolutely my fault. I mean, who else could it be? But it was a stupid decision that I made. So it was a big lessons, for, uh, lessons learned for me what not to do in the future. So first of all, um, in, when I was living in the UK, I've been part of an, a model engineering society. Um, and obviously there was like loads of them and in Hungary we don't really have anything like that uh, when it comes to like uh, you know seven and a quarter or five inch gauge railways so the only thing we have well the only sort of like public place we have is uh, in the um, railway museum and they do these open days or you know special events a couple of times a week a couple of times a year when they invite people to you know come uh, bring their trains and run them so this is the, uh, really the only opportunity for me to have a you know large enough track that i can really test the engine how I think it works and and um, you know how reliable it is because you know what i have in the garden is like 50 meters it's not um, you know a huge railway and one loop here is I think about 840 meters or something like that and uh, the reason this was special because there was this uh, museum night events which um, it, that's basically organized every single year so between 6 o'clock and 1 a.m. you buy one admission to one of the museums and then you can visit all of the museums free of charge uh, during the evening and uh, so the Raven Museum is also part of that. So we were kind of expecting a lot of people starting to turn up at six. Um, and, and that's pretty much how it went. So in the morning there was uh, very few passengers and then they started coming up at six. And we were basically, you know, running with pretty much full trains all the way to 1 a.m. And uh, um, it, was, it was quite nice. And this was the first time for me, you know, running in the evening. So let me talk about, you know, running and the whole Wi-Fi controller. So first of all, it worked and I had no issues at all and it was it was doing its job and you know the wireless link was uh, stable. I had no issues controlling the loco and um, it was just doing you know whatever I expected. Uh, although there were a couple of uh, really small in I wouldn't say issues, it was more about obs observations. Probably one small issue I had is there was one single time when um, uh, the, the remote, uh, the throttle wasn't connecting to the loco and I couldn't really figure out. And of course, uh, you know, there, there was a lot of things happening. So I just basically switched, on the lo switched off the loco and switched it on again. So it rebooted the, um, uh, the receiver and then everything was fine. So that was one thing. The other thing which I really liked is, well, and there was the whole point that I was sitting at the end of the train so I can, uh, you know, watch the, the kids uh, that rode on my train. And of course, I think it was a big thing for the kids as well, because instead of looking at my back, they could, you know, watch out and then, you know, look at the track and everything. So they don't have their view obscured. Of course, if there was a big bloke sitting in front of me, then I had to like lean out to watch the signals and also of course i had to be uh, really um, uh, observant on the on the points so as i was approaching the station i just had to you know look ahead and then watch the points so i know which you know track i would be going into and you know what time to break and i think that was one uh, occasion where I bumped into the the train in front of me so there were so many trains that um, the gas trains usually just used up one of the tracks so we just uh, stopped behind each other because otherwise uh, well there was no more track available on the station so that was that was a main well that was a small thing I mean you just have to get used to it by not being in front of the train but um, I think it was more enjoyable for everyone. I mean, you are going to see a footage, um, me doing a lap and, and this funny view that, you know, um, there is a coach where nobody's sitting on it, you know, nobody's sitting on a driving trolley and the engine and, you know, everything works. The 
other thing is about the whole control. So um, on on this throttle there is a, a small, I think it's an OLED screen, so it's almost like a phone screen. It obviously has the issues like every phone has, so if there is a, like a full a bright daylight you can't really see anything. So as, as soon as the, uh, you know, some clouds came around or I was uh, under the trees in the shade, then I could read the screen, but otherwise not really. It wasn't a big issue, um, although I, um, I was, uh, I started to drive based on the speed. So, you know, because I have a rotary um, encoder, which basically just rot rotates 360, it didn't give me the feel that you know in this position the train is going to go that fast but i really quickly learned how i can increase and decrease the speed by doing like a half turn or a quarter turn or a full turn or the rotary encoder so um actually it is it is quite easy to get used to that sort of control um the other thing i had is um the the receiver has a built-in deceleration delay and I just have to basically uh, bring this down uh, up to the minimum because um, there were a couple of situations where I should have braked much quicker than I actually did. But this is something that I can configure in the receiver. So next time I will just basically drive it down to zero. So as soon as I, you know, turn the dial back to zero, then it will stop much more quickly. But it was something more uh, how this track is designed because there are a few automated signals and there is a detector probably like you know 20 meters behind the signal and then when you reach it then it turns the signal from red to let's say you know yellow or or green if the block in front of you is free or not but you don't know whether it's going to stay red or going to go you know go green or yellow uh, before you reach that um, sensor and that distance was sometimes a little bit you know too short especially if I was uh, going uh, a quick but again this is something that you get used to after a couple of laps so it wasn't a big deal going back to the screen um, I really like how I designed the screen um, the different layouts were quite useful uh, to be honest I was usually using the last uh, screen option which showed me the temperature of the two controllers or two separate controller boards um, because well it was a hot day so i was most concerned about that and it was mo much more easier to read those big letters than the smaller letters and i think what i might exp um, you know explore in the future is to you know start using these uh, development boards which have the e ink display you know like the um, readers like the kindle that sort of display because you know that is visible in every um, light situation so if there is full sunlight you would be able to read that um, well you won't be able to read that in the dark so maybe like an ink display with a with a backlight function i think that would be ideal for outdoors but i haven't used any of these so this is something that i you know need to get used to or while well, getting into and learn how to use that so oh yeah and, and probably one more thing because the speed in the, you know the speed number is actually a really small number i think that would be um it would be nice if i can redesign the screen just to have that uh, a much bigger number on the screen um, maybe instead of having that wedge shape um, which you know shows me the like the volume control type of uh, triangle i mean that's to be honest that's pretty much useful because especially on my engine my speed indicator is one to two five five and the, like the the biggest speed i was at is like 45 or 50. so you know the um the reduction ratio on my engine is not big enough so i can only use really small speeds otherwise it would just go <laughs> really really fast so that was about the controller i was happy the battery that's the power bank was way too much powerful I didn't even lose one um, light on the battery status, so that was more than enough. I, sh you know, a much smaller battery uh, should, ha should have sufficed for that. And the controllers were working, everything was working. 
the kids uh, of course the you know they didn't notice anything and i i'm pretty sure that really they really liked the fact of you know sitting in front of the train um i was asked by the you know the drivers there is it funny well, if it feels uh, weird sitting in the back um i would assume that maybe that could have some security and you know safety implications but i didn't but they didn't care i liked it so it worked out fine so maybe lastly let me mention about the mechanical issue so towards really at the end like i think it was half past 10 already uh, so what I noticed that was my engine wasn't really pulling and as I said I was looking at that screen which gives me the two temperature reading for the two motors and well not the motors but the controller for the motors and one of them was like like 31 32 degrees which is like the you know that's normally you know it goes between 31 and, and 40 something but then the other one was shooting up to like 60 degrees so I noticed that there is something wrong so by the time I came back to the um, station and I looked at it I noticed that the chain was done on one of the engine so okay well the guys helped we put the chain back I did another lap and the chain came off again so we thought it must be an issue with the chain tension so we put the chain back again for the second time and we adjusted the ta uh, chain tension and then we came uh, I did another lap and the chain came off again so and um, and then I started looking and I realized that before I prepare the engine for this day, I just realized that I haven't, I, I've never really greased the bearings. I mean, um, these bearing blocks, to be honest, based on my usage, I don't think that they need to be greased at, at all. But I thought, ah, maybe I need to do something about that. And um, I wasn't thinking too much about it. And I picked the WD-40. Uh, which probably I shouldn't have. So anyway, um, I greased it, well, greased it in, in double course with WD-40. And um, that had in unseen consequences because um, in my bearing blocks, I have some set screws and those are the set screws that, that keep the, uh, the axle in place. So it, it, you know, it doesn't go anywhere left and right. So the WD-40 made uh, work these set screws loose. So all of my set screws will lose and um, I think I've also lo uh, I lost a few of them. Uh, as I said, it was like 10 p.m. We were trying to troubleshoot all these using the foam light and everything. And, um, and what it meant is that my front wheel was starting to you know shift either to the left or the right because obviously that was getting most of the um, you know the forces from the track as it was going into the curves and this is why the chain came off and um, I mean I tried fixing it you know I retightened the set screws again but probably everything was covered in WD-40 still and I did another test lap and the chain came off like third time and I said okay I'm calling the day that's it and um, I mean, there was just a couple of hours, probably like one and a half or two hours left. So I was using that time to ride on some of the other trains. Um, it was a kind of a, a bad experience because other than that, everything has worked fine. And if I had not used the WD-40 and if I just left the engine as it is, then, you know, everything would have been fine. So, um, yeah. I'm a little bit sorry about that, but again, as I said, this is a lesson learned. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to do that again. So I think I need to use some sort of thinners just to wash off the WD-40 and probably I'm going to buy some new set screws because, well, I anyway need new ones and I will probably some use some Loctite um, thread locker as well and just, just replace the set screws and, and that should be it. So hopefully it's going to be like a really small repair and the loco is going to be back in the original shape and uh, most probably it's going to be ready for the next open day which i heard is going to be sometime in september so i'm um, definitely uh, looking forward to that and um, i don't think i'm going to do anything with the remote in the near future just because it's summer and everything so probably in the winter i would try to think about like if i should you know maybe change something in the control uh, I was also thinking about actually removing the the AI acceleration control because you know based on how 
uh, quick you turn the wheel it changes direction based on that and maybe it would be useful if there is no acceleration control so i would know that in any you know any time i do half a turn or a full turn the, the loco is going to reduce or break or accelerate to a certain extent and because i was using the vibro motor i was also thinking about maybe i can do like it gives a tick every you know five ten speed steps that would be a good feedback as well that um you know how much i've applied acceleration or braking and then of course as i said maybe uh, a version with an ink display which is going to be easy to read in the full sunlight as well but um i think that was it in overall i was quite happy with you know how things turned out and i will continue from here uh, but that will be all for today thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video